Hey, welcome to my channel. Welcome back. Welcome for the first time. All around welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger and I'm a freelance copywriter as a career. And this is going into my seventh year on Fiverr. And uh, it's Freelance Friday. And in today's video, that is specifically how to confidently talk about yourself without sounding braggy or not giving yourself enough credit. So in an online community platform, marketplace, whatever you wanna call it, um, like Fiverr, for example, because that's where I sell, it's really hard to stand out clearly <laughs> because there are so many competing sellers. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, one way is the cheapest option because if you're looking for someone who is on a budget, just literally having the lowest value in search is you know one way to get attention and that's one way to kind of narrow parameters for people who are looking for you. Um, I'm gonna talk about something a little bit different. I'm gonna talk about um, kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, which is when your quality is a reason that people will pay more of a premium or specifically choose you over someone else because they feel like an actual quality or emotional connection to you and that your confident self-promotion feels genuine or at least that's what I intend to be doing in my own marketing and branding myself as a seller. Um, and so I'm kind of gonna dive into the ways that I, you know, think about marketing myself, why, why I'm doing some of the things that I am and why I think that those have helped me to be more successful in um, a very saturated marketplace, which is freelance copywriting and blog writing and description writing and sales copy and emails and <laughs> a lot of the other things that I do. So first of all, one suggestion that I have is to show your face. I don't see why you wouldn't because in any type of even like traditional business, when you work with someone in real life, they're still gonna see your face. So I'm not entirely sure what the like psychology of why people are choosing to have, you know, not their name, not an actual picture, use explainer videos, things like that, abstract, like abstract things, because I don't personally connect with that. When I see a random geometric logo for a person, that doesn't make me want to work with them and feel like I'm connected with them and that I can trust them because that's not a person, right? I'm just working with like a nameless, faceless nobody. And I do understand that I have some small amount of privilege. I'm a privileged person. As a Caucasian, young, pretty-ish woman, I do have a little bit of like Western... I'm like the girl next door, as my husband always says. And so people are in some ways like probably more trusting of someone who might look like me, um, which is not always great. Don't do that. But I'm saying that I do totally understand that I am more comfortable putting myself out there in video and, and photos and that people might believe that I'm American based on, you know, what I look like and what I sound like. Okay, this is diving into a different territory than I meant to take. I'm just saying that I highly recommend that you show your own true self. That you don't need to hide your skin color or your accent or who you are in your physical appearance. I don't think that that's true. And I think that being your true, authentic, genuine self and putting that out there as a real partner that people can literally look into your eyes, they can see you, they can hear you, they can see that you're a real person and that you are passionate about what you're doing and that it's like they can work with you, they can trust you, it's not just they can trust blog writer Z 2478Y. That's not as connectionable, right? So connectionable, who am I? Show your face, show yourself, show who you are because people want to work with someone that they can actually relate to and feel like when you're typing into a chat box that feels pretty, you know, sterile, unrelated, um, that when they're actually talking to you. Another suggestion, let me get my little list over here. 
The best way to make sure that you can confidently promote yourself is to make sure that you actually deserve the promotion that you're giving yourself. So, hey, let's talk about not scamming people, right? It's not gonna sound genuine and believable and interesting and if you don't actually have the skills that you say that you do. So people can see through that, it's called lying, and uh, don't do it, okay? Next, I personally think that portfolios are one of the best way to show what you can do and not just what you can do, but the style of what you're doing it. Because when it comes down to more of a high bid client who is willing to spend money for quality, but they don't just want anything. They want a specific something that will serve their brand and be a specific like asset to them. And so especially in design scenarios for sure, but also in copywriting. I think people don't quite realize that there are different styles of writing. Just a natural voice of my writing is going to sound different than even a different copywriter because we have different writing styles and different tone and the way that we describe things is a little bit different. And so um, I think that a portfolio is a great way to show the breadth of your work, show the different categories and styles that you can write for, um, and then show what they can literally expect. Your stone, <laughs> your tone, your style, your you know command of the grammar, absolutely, your descriptive details, absolutely, the actual like selling copywriting style, absolutely. Um, but the tone and style should not be overlooked because that's what makes your writing or your design or your anything else unique um, and special to you. And that is what you're selling in addition to just I can do it, but I can do it this way. Reviews, of course, are the number one way, in my opinion, to show your quality, validity, realness, whatever you would like to call it. That's my new catchphrase. I notice I say that all the time now. Someone tell me to stop because I don't like it. Reviews are the number one way to show that, especially in a marketplace like Fiverr, where um, it is quantifying your success and your um, reach, and obviously like the track record of success and validity that you can show. Um, in addition to just showing them on your profile, yeah, profile, that's the word. I also like to have a portfolio of my featured reviews. So for example, at, I can't talk, at carryblogger.com slash fan mail, I have just a bunch of like my favorite heartwarming reviews that I put on there and I should update it and add some more recently that have just like warmed my heart. But the ones where people talk with like passion and they like just, they have something really special to say and I like to highlight those and if a customer is ever in doubt about like they're not really sure that it's what they like should be spending their money on or they're not really sure that I can deliver what I say I can, um, I just love to send them straight to that link and say like you can take my advice or my word for it for sure but listen to these people like these are people just like you also starting small businesses also doing some amazing new interesting project and they trusted me with their project and here's what they have to say. And that way it's not like super self braggy. It's not too like pushy for me. It's just kind of saying like, absolutely do your research. I wholeheartedly support that. Here is one way that you can, you know, validate if you think that it's worth it or it's not based on other customers' opinions. Next thing I highly recommend, it's chilly in here. I highly recommend that you measure your metrics as much as possible. Um, I don't think, you know, cause I'm only 20, how old am I? 25 and I haven't been doing this for years and years and years. This is going into my seventh year. So I do have, you know, a career going right now or whatever you'd like to call it. But as a young millennial, I don't think that time of doing a job is really always the best indicator of anything because I literally just, it's time and experience is good, but uh, I think that there are a lot of other really valuable ways to measure yourself and mark your um, achievements. And absolutely, if experience and time on the job is something that you can um, champion for yourself, then 100% you should do that. But if you think like, oh, I'm pretty new to this and I can't just say that I've been doing this for 10 years, don't, don't 
don't make that your number one metric. Focus on the actual clients that you've worked on. Give case study examples of who you have helped. Again, focus on your reviews, focus on your portfolio, focus on your background. If you've had extensive training getting up to this, focus on other related work, like you used to work in this other industry and this has helped you because it's basically like a job interview, but on like a super mini, much more casual scale. But you always want to promote yourself with tangibles, the specific metrics that actually back it up. So you're not just saying, yeah, I'm great and I know how to do everything, but you're saying, I am great because I've done this and this and this and this and this, and you can see an example here and you can see feedback here. And it's just backing up the I'm great with actual specifics that people can really believe and get to know and do their research for people you know, like me. I'm a researcher. I want to know anything and everything before I make a decision to purchase something. And so that's how I promote myself to my customers, assuming that they are also going to want to do some research and get to know that as well. Thanks so much for watching. Again, it's Freelance Friday on my channel. I am Carrie Blogger on Fiverr as a career freelancer. And so I just want to share a look inside my work life, um, helpful hints if you are also interested in freelancing or just you know an interesting look into a kind of non-traditional career that um, I think is fascinating every single day and it just keeps changing and I am loving YouTube for a lot of new reasons. So it's just fun for me to do and I hope that you enjoy them as well. If you have any questions for me, something you would like me to comment on or like talk about, please be sure to comment below. I do really enjoy answering comment questions in these kind of videos um, and that helps me to know what you're interested in watching. So I would love to know. And if you're not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe do me a huge favor and just help my teeny little channel continue to grow. So, all right, let's get back to work. See ya.